Hello, people. You might be wondering what a penguin is doing in an anatomy lecture. But you know what? Penguins are really favorite one of anatomists. And this might sound funny, but it's because a penguin stays in anatomical position most of the time. This posture you're looking at right here is sufficient to explain the anatomical position. But we want you to learn the importance too. So stick with us in coming flashcards. In today's video, I'll be talking about the three I's, Introduction, Importance and Implementation of Anatomical Portion. These things are sufficient to help you out during your anatomy classes and one can study anatomy without knowing about the basic concept of anatomical portion. So without further ado, let's get started. So what actually is an anatomical portion? Anatomical position is a universally accepted standard position and it's important because this position provides a universal reference point for accurate description on how and exactly where the body parts or the organs are placed in a body. I'll make you guys clear on this concept on the later part of the video by giving examples but for now let me talk about the implementation of anatomical position. So where and how are anatomical positions actually used? In your future in an anatomy lab, you'll be watching many organs and you're not allowed to hold the organ in a haphazard way for story purpose. Hence, size determination for an organ is designed. So for the size determination of an organ in a proper and universal manner too, you need to hold the organ in an anatomical portion, maintaining the reference of your body. For example, while studying an organ, let's say liver, you need to first understand how that organ is actually placed in human body. And this idea is provided by the concept of anatomical portion. So once you learn to hold an organ in an anatomical portion, you will be easily studying about its anatomy. It means in relation to human body, which is its anterior surface, posterior surface and so on. And yes, I want you guys to be clear on the fact that anatomical portion does not only imply standing up with that erect posture, but it has many other scopes too. Now before understanding the concept of anatomical portion, first of all you need to learn how to properly stand in an anatomical portion. Don't worry, I'm going to help you with this. Now lift your head up with your eyes looking straight towards the horizon. Don't worry, I know you are in a closed room and you won't find horizon even getting yourself outside the room due to these tall houses. So what you can do is you can make your primary gaze just parallel to the ground level. Remember, you should maintain your head position in such a way that your inferior margin of the eye socket or your orbit, see in the figure carefully, and your external ear opening, the both of them they pass through the straight line horizontally. In our next step, place your hands by your sides, I mean just side of your thigh and let me make it clear that it's the flexor surface of your arm and forearm that faces forward along with your palmar surface. See now I suppose you're clear on your flexor surface, extensor surface, dorsal, ventral, all these terms, right? But if you still have confusion, you can watch our video on general anatomy. Now when you notice the feet, the feet are placed together with the toes forward in the picture. But in some books, you might also find that the feet are placed slightly apart too. You don't have to make it a big deal since it doesn't matter when you explain about the organs portions, even if there is a slight distance or closeness within the feet portions. Like medial is gonna lie closer to the midline and lateral is always away to the midline, right? This is the same picture of a person standing on anatomical portion when viewed from different different sides. Okay, so let me give you a scenario. There were two anatomists that discovered a organ an organ called gallbladder and they reported to the senior through a letter and by the letter i mean the one you post in a post box okay 
So the first anatomy sees the body placed in upright position, and he wrote a letter to his senior that said, "It appears that the green organ is present on the inferior surface of liver." The next day, another anatomist came and visited the body, and now the same body has been put in bed in a sleeping position. And now the anatomist observes the organ from the head end of the body. He then reported to his senior in a letter saying. The organ lies in the posterior part of the liver. Now, what we have is the senior who received two letters. The first letter explaining that the organ is present in the inferior aspect of the liver, and in the other letter, it's mentioned that the organ is present in the posterior aspect of the liver. See, now this created a confusing situation, right? So to eliminate this confusion. The anatomist brought up this idea of the anatomical position. Okay, so the gist of the story is that it's important to place an organ in an anatomical position because, from one plane of view, it seems at one position, and from another view, it seems at another place, and this is quite unacceptable to everyone. So, if we don't have a knowledge of anatomical position. Looking at those pictures, we too get confused that whether the gallbladder is present on the inferior surface or the posterior surface, right? This is a picture of the longest bone of your body, which is of the thigh, and its name is femur. Can you see that rounded end of the bone? Yes, that's the head of the bone, and it fits into the hip bone to form a hip joint. Now, can you guys guess which body sites this bone is? This is the same femur, and I want you guys to guess again for me which body sites it is. No hurry, take your time. Okay, so I'm placing those two bones in a single slide in this image, and let me tell you the secret that it's the same single bone, but I'm just placing one on my right hand and one on my left hand. Imagine this, okay? You can either imagine me, okay, or you can imagine yourselves holding that bone. So it's the same size bone that is the subject's right femur. You'll later understand how this is right, how this is left, how it articulates to form a hip joint and all stuffs that stay connected to us. But for now, uh, first of all, let me clear you all that it's the same size femur in both the above slides, okay? So in the left side of the picture in the slide, or your left, my left, it's the same, you know. It's the patient's or the subject's right femur. Okay, I'm placing it facing anteriorly, which is its anatomical portion. And in the right side image of the slide, the right image. Okay, focus on the right image of the slide, or your right, the image present on your right. I'm holding the same bone. But I just turned the bone in one eighty degrees now. Okay, I just turned it around such that the anterior surface now became what the posterior surface, right? See, I'm not. I I don't mean to confuse you guys. I just hold the bone first of all, right bone on one of my right hand. Okay, let's say right hand, such that it's my right femur. Imagine. Now I just rotated the bone in one eighty degrees. Such that it appears like it's of the left side, okay? But it's not of the left side. I want you guys to be clear on this. So both of the images are of the same right side femur. See, holding the bone in both the ways, they they feel correct, right? But that's not actually correct since the formation of hip joint in the body that actually requires the bone to stay in an anatomical position in the body. You just can't please. Right bone, left side, left bone, right side, and then expect the hip joint formation just to occur that way. You guys are clear about that now. Cool. See this multiple images in this slide, showing various portions apart from anatomical portion. Now, apart from anatomical portions too, there are so many other portions. But why did we prioritize anatomical portions so much? You'll be clear now when I'll be giving you an example. Okay, 
So imagine yourself, you are standing in an anatomical position, right? And focus on your one organ. Okay, liver again. Think about the anterior surface of the liver that is facing your front. Now imagine yourself sleeping in a supine or an uttanoporic position. Now what happened to your anterior surface? Is it still the anterior surface? Is it still facing front? No. Now the surface is facing the ceiling, right? So what did it become? Now that anterior surface became the upper or the superior surface that is facing the ceiling. Yes. This is why we chose anatomical portion of the body and with respect to it, the organs too. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope this video was a bit twisted, yet knowledgeable to you guys. If you still are quite confused, there's no need to panic because we'll be dealing about numerous organs in future and with more and more examples, you'll eventually be clear. You can comment down your queries and we'll get right back to you. So if you think this went cool, give us some motivation by liking our video and do give us a subscription. Made it? We made it for you.